And welcome, it's the early morning Sunday show, which Van Gogh knows the best show on the planet. Well, Van Gogh's dead, but I'm sure if he was here, he'd say that. Uh, today, brand new music, brand new music. In fact, I've been told it could be the best album of the year. I'm going to show that here, here and here. All right. Um, some rap. Because for whatever reason, I've been getting an early rap. Uh, a classic from the 70s. It's just phenomenal. And another album came out. It's a, of a lost tape. It's like, wow, that thing's great. I think I got something else in there. I don't know. Um, but not much otherwise ha happening around here. You know, work's been good. You know, we've uh, you know, really got into a rhythm. And, you know, knowing what I'm doing... Uh, and it's just, you know, I, I, I get done, you know, fairly early now, which is really good. And I've actually been out there, um, going out, cleaning some pools, you know, working, learning this because now my college kids are starting to go back to school. They think they need to go back to college. They don't want to become professional, um, pool cleaners, which is only a, you know, job for five months or four months so yeah maybe so so i things could start getting tense again um, especially in a few weeks but uh yeah i've been out and you know it's just kind of interesting in my whole life i you know i've worked uh I've worked in suits. I've worn suits since college, you know, um, coming out, began working, you know, suits and ties. Eventually, we got rid of ties about uh, 10 years ago or so. Um, but now it's, you know, now, well, here's me, here's me now in my, at, at, with, with my, with my work truck and uh, my, my new, uh, my, my new clothes right there. Yeah, how about that? Okay, we're a lot more casual at work now. <laughs> Actually, that was a rough day. Uh, someone, a, a spy got over chlorinated, got in there, and it's like, oh my God, the chlorine levels are through the roof. And lucky it happened at night. I mean, it was so bad that water had splashed on my pants, and my pants turned colors. <laughs> yeah, it, my eyes were burning. It, it was a bad one. Um, Check out um, my uh, podcast with Jim Cleason. You can find it on Radio Wasteland on YouTube, Spotify, otherwise iHeart, Apple, Amazon, and um, two guys talking about records. On YouTube, it's on Radio Wasteland. I just said that. Uh, good broadcast. Uh, this week, actually, we're going to look at um, some of our most valuable albums. I know I've showed mine, uh, but I'm going to show some again. Some have changed, and Jim's going to show his, so it should be an interesting episode. But let's get into some music. Um, yeah, for, I've received something from a friend of mine, a great friend, uh, which I dearly miss in Michigan, Michael Christensen. And his, um, his channel is ML Blue 535 It's right there in case I got those numbers wrong. Um, but uh, Michael is a musician. Uh, and on his channel, you know, he plays a lot of the music that he um, he's recorded. He has videos of it. Uh, really, he's right now he's working on becoming a teacher. I mean, he's taught. He's been all over the world, um, taught in China, as a matter of fact. But I guess that China teaching license doesn't work here. I don't know. But he sent me this. Now, isn't that a cool looking album? Uh, isn't that neat looking? And this is Beechwood Sparks. Beechwood Sparks Across the River and the Stars. And this comes out here. And like that. And uh, one of his favorite people, um, um, singers, is a guy called Farmer Dave. And I've shown you a couple Farmer Dave albums that Michael has shared with me. And these are off Curation Records. Curation Records. Uh, this is just fun. This is really nice. And we'll go, I'll cover this more on an upcoming Sunday show, but it's a brand new album. And uh, it, it's, it 
you know, kind of cheerful music. Makes you feel good. Uh, really, really enjoyed this. And uh, uh, he did tell me it's at 45 RPM. He told me that. Now, did that really help? Uh, of course not. I throw, of course, throw it on at 33 RPM, and this one does not, unlike Melanda, uh, Melanda Lambert, this does not sound good at 33 RPM. Maybe only females sound good at 33 RPM. I mean, I guess it can give that male type voice that I don't know, but, uh, wonderful stuff from Michael. Um, truly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was fun. You know, I, I had the pleasure of hanging out with Michael a number of times and always a good time. Okay. So best album of the year. What is the best album of the year? Uh, my friend Dave, local bandography. He went back to his first channel name. Thank God, because that's the one in my mind. But Dave constantly will send me a text with a picture go, best album of the year. This is the best album of the year. I mean, it's, I mean, and this, this thing changes a lot. And then, you know, I, I can't buy every best album of the year because there's only one, but I don't, Dave keeps finding them. So this is one he, he, he was just raving about. It became very hard to get shellac. And the name of it is to all trains. Well, it says it right there too, but that's kind of a cool cover because this is actually the front cover. To all trains by Shellac. Isn't that beautiful? I'm a, I love trains. I, I'm a train fan. I've always been since I've been little. And my grandson likes trains. Yes. So, um, this is it. Shellac. And you know what? Even my uh, first visit to UK, we had an extra week. We had just one, you know, we, it was a three week visit. Uh, two weeks was with the college, and then we had one week out where we could go by ourselves the last week. I chased trains in the UK. UK is big in train watching, huge thing in train, train watching. And yeah, I was one of those guys. I still like them. Okay, so Shellac. All right, this, they started in 92, broke up. Well, they ended in 24 because um, one of the main men, Steve Albini, died. And this is his group. Uh, it's, it's an American noise rock band. It was th it's, a, it's a trio of Steve Albini, uh, Mike West, West, Westones, I believe, and Todd Trans. I probably got those wrong, but uh, kind of post-hardcore math rock. And, you know, they're really, I guess, what they're, what they're really known for, and uh, I'm no expert on these guys, uh, is sarcastic lyrics. Well, if you if you like Big Black, if you like from the 80s, Big Black, which was very much kind of a noise rock band, they can, shellac is the is taking big black to the next level. I really, when you think of two very influential noise rock bands, it would be big black and um, shellac. Uh, and this 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 album's really great. I mean, it is fun stuff. Uh, it is loud. And <laughs> there we go. Uh, see those kind of vehicles running around and. There's a song about salvagers, modern day salvagers. <laughs> you know, it's like I, I, I remember in, in Midland when uh, heavy trash day, once a month you get heavy trash day, you bring out the big crap, you know, you, that you want to get rid of, and they don't pick it up. And there's the scrappers. The scrappers are coming around. These are the guys that they, they get it and they jump into the front yard, and this front yard is just this chaotic mess of stuff. It's like, what are you doing? Well, you may use that. You may sell. Some try to sell it. Some, I suppose, be scrap it. Some try to fix it. I don't know. But uh, it's, they just go. And you always know when it's, when you got bad crap, in, when, the, when, when the salvagers won't pick it up, you know you got crappy stuff. But that has nothing to do with this album. So, uh, they, they put out seven studio albums. This came out in 2024. It was released. Steve, Steve Obini died 10 days before the release of this so that this sold out right away because of that and it's been hard to get and uh, you know David showed it he goes man good luck on finding it which he likes to show me stuff and say hey good luck on finding it we call that a tease uh, but 
very, this this is this is really good. They they sing about karaoke. These uh they they celebrate karaoke. They celebrate girls' new wave bands. They talk about urban scrap salvagers like that picture. Um, sing about self obsession and so much else. It's tw it's um was it 12 songs in 28 minutes so it goes quick it goes fast it is 33 rpm at least i think um so it's really it's a banger of an album it, it really is and i mean uh it's like lean mean math rock machine happening on, on on this thing what's very interesting is when you listen to it the guitar bass and drums they are all clear one instrument does not overpower the other instruments that's something i immediately noticed that each one is very clear on what they're doing and no one's taking it over uh it's really cool i mean it just this this thing sounds fantastic and if those of you that have um very nice stereo systems very expensive ones i mean i got a nice stereo system but you know the high fidelity things whew, i bet that thing would sound incredible so um uh, yeah uh it is really good um album of the year dave i i, I don't know i i i I, I I think you know this this could very very well be top ten, but I know Dave already I think changed that this is no longer album of the year. But uh, yes, two all trades and a shellac, very good. And so speaking of shellac, I also had bought this, and this is end of radio, and this is a two album set. Nothing really special on the end. Well, yeah, you got pictures. See, we got pictures there here um this is bbc sessions there we go and it's um so one album's from the bbc sessions and the other is alive and the bbc sessions were formed uh done in july of 94 and then um i think and um, i think john peel died shortly after this i mean what's with shellac and people dropping dead i don't know but i hope i don't this could be a curse. I'm not sure, but uh, then then the other one is a live. Uh, there is is a live show. Actually, it was done live in the studio. Done live in a studio. Well, people came in, and um, from 2004, uh, it just kind of gives you a feel what shellac was about, what earlier shellac was about, and what they were sounding like. Um, fun listen you know good stuff isn't necessary probably wasn't necessary but i wanted i couldn't get that album for the longest time so i bought this just to see what dave was talking about um on the live part there are these extended jams songs like end of radio um billiards and on the extended jams it really you can hear them stretching out some you could hear them taking these songs instead of very fast and quick um, going in and doing something a little more, which which was sounded good. I mean, it really did. Again, nice sounding stuff. It was good to hear what the early stuff was. You know, again, coming off a of big black, and you do have that feel on here. So, yeah, shellac. <laughs> Not easy doing this for more Olympics are on right now. Oh my God! I have this channel Peacock. I got because a Tour de France. I had I, I I'm a Tour de France junkie. Been since the 90s, and now it's it's the Olympics. And I love the Olympics. So I have like every single thing. I mean every event going on. Even from all the other countries around this thing. You open up this app and it's like holy crap. 
crud. I mean, where are you go? I mean, you don't even know what to choose. There's too much. You know, it's like you get one of those menus. You go to a restaurant. They have a giant menu. You don't even know what to order because there's just too much. Well, that's what it is in the Olympics right now. It's like, I don't know. There's like 10 events. I, I can record some. But how many don't have time to watch it? So, ew, wow. But it's the Olympics and I can watch it in my office. So, as I'm invoicing and checking on things and eh, ordering stuff, I can watch Olympics. But, I don't know. Wow, how did I get to that way? I don't know. But, um, a while back, I had from the Vinyl Community Podcast for my uh, good friend Chance. And... Um, he sent me a couple albums. I showed one. Here's another one he sent. Snoop Dogg. And this is Snoop Dogg's very first one. Doggy style. Now, when I originally showed it, I just called it Dog Diggity or something. Diggity Dog or whatever. <laughs> uh, but it's doggy style. Um, now, uh, it's Snoop's. Actually, his real name is Kelvin Cordozar. Um, brought us the first uh so yeah but his mom called him snoopy that's what his mom called him snoopy because she liked peanuts so he was called that um he's born in 71 uh, in long beach and uh but you know he's he's gone by the name snoop doggy dog for a while he was snoop lion but that didn't work out so well so we became snoop dog rapper producer actor and now olympic commentator yes snoop dogg is the as one of the olympic commentators so he just brings some um some young hip stuff to it though he's from 71 it's not like he's young anymore i mean he's over 50 he's old now um snoop dogg he was really he uh, at a very young age he was playing piano and singing in the church was doing all of that, um, really enjoying himself. Oh, we got a hype sticker. We got a comic here, um, which, well, um, it's called Doggy. <laughs> it's called Doggy Style. So, uh, yeah, you can make the most of those comics. And uh, it comes there. It is 45 RPM. Snoop Dogg sounds terrible. Terrible, just terrible at 33 RP. Oh my God, it's awful. Um, but in, in school, he loved choir. He's very active in choir and playing football. That was his love. But uh, began rapping by the sixth grade and then joined the gangs. And then life began to turn not for the best for him. Met his friend Warren G. They hung out together. Warren G. Introduced him to Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. When Dr. Dre did the chronic, Snoop Dogg was on that album, which was good because Snoop Dogg's career was not doing anything. He was struggling and all that, but that got him noticed. So this is his debut, and this is the first rap debut to come in to the charts at number one. That was 1993, rap had taken a hold of white America, and this came in at number one. And this is really filled with P-Funk inspired grooves. And that's what attracts me to it. There is just that P-Funk sound going on. And uh, you can hear it. It's very, there's, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of different grooves layered in there. If you listen to it, you can really hear it. It's this easy rolling production. I It, it really is. It's it's gangster, but it's not about anger and aggression so much, or it doesn't come out. You know, it not that hard biting public enemy. Instead, this is very laid back and melodic. He's still talking gangster life. He's still talking about dope. He's still talking about women, not always in a positive way, but it's just laid back and funky with his laconic draw going on. And uh, this is great to get. I have been buying a lot of that early's rap because that was a part of my 20s and 30s, and I really liked it. And, you know, 93, you know, that's still a good spot for me. So, chances, this, this, this just hit, it hit the sweet spot. And uh, we're very happy to have that back. Yeah, so we gon' smoke a ounce to this. G's up, hoes down, why you motherfuckers bounce to this? Laid back. With my mind on my money and my money on my mind. Laid back. With my mind on my money and my money on my mind. Laid back. I got 
me some Seagram's gin. Everybody got their cups, but they ain't chipped in. This just got released. It had been released, oh, years ago. This is Ocean, O-Z-E-A-N. This is an, and, oh, he's, he's hiding there. It's an American shoegaze band. And it's on a beautiful white vinyl, white, white vinyl. That is super, that's like bleach white. Eh, nothing there. Not a lot on this group because they only made three songs. They put these three songs onto a cassette. Ocean is from San Francisco. Formed in 93, broke up in 93, okay? Uh, Eric Shea, he, he was at a Ride Lush concert, and there was these flyers looking for, I believe, a guitarist uh, that liked Ride Lush, Cocteau Twins, Birds, but it was more of a shoegazy uh, type music that they are looking for. And the person I was looking for was um, Mike Prezanko. So he answered that, and they got together and began writing music. And again, with that kind of the shoegaze sound going on, well, as they're writing it, they go, you know, we really need a female singer. So they did. They brought in a female singer, uh, and it was um, uh, Lisa Bear. And so she came in, and uh, she added these cooing vocals that they want. Think Astro Gilberto. And they made this album. And this is just, you know, it, they, they only they, they put it on cassette. And this was in 91 when they did it. No one cared. No one wanted it. Uh, they broke up. The cassette kind of just got shoved aside. When 92, these tapes were found again. And someone put it out in 93. Well, it's been, yeah, it hasn't been out there. But now they re-released it on, I believe this was off Numero. This is top-notch um, shoegaze dream pop. It is is phenomenal i i mean it's only three songs and they're beautiful they're gorgeous they're amazing um i i wish they had gone on i wish they had done an album that someone had cared because i found this music incredibly good i mean just mind-blowing i just this 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 is excellent uh for three songs it's three songs i can't get enough of and if it's a new album it'd be my new album of the year um, because I think it's that great, but Ocean, very good. <laughs> Classic here. Just real quick, I got this at the record store, and really this should have been brought back into my collection. I talked about this when I, I bought this when I went to that Denver record store when I came up. Uh, Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers. Uh, I th was thinking I was getting an original, and I did not. I think it's a second press, but oh well. Um, formed in uh, actually this this was released in 1976 but it was recorded in 73 and it's a lot of the the songs the demos that they did with John Cale uh, there's a few other producers but John Cale did a lot of this Jonathan Richmond was a was a huge Velvet Underground fan when Velvet Underground would go to Boston uh, where Richmond's from he would go always to see them he was just a young kid but they taught him guitar i think sterling morris was teaching him licks and all that and uh so you have velvet underground inspired kind of minimalistic rock and roll um with that art punk of velvet underground you have that in here uh you know it, it just it's it's stripped down rock and roll this is one of the greatest albums of all time in my book.
I, I, I did, you know, I learned about it through a compilation here in Roadrunner, and I had to buy it, but, I mean, it's a tour de force, especially side one, Roadrunner, Astro Plane, Old World, Pablo Picasso, those are amazing songs in my, my mind, uh, side two, he does Modern World, he has Girlfriend, uh, She Cracked, uh, and a couple others, I, I I adore this album to no extent, and I can never get enough of it. So I I'm still just I love having it. Um, you know, Jerry Harrison from the Talking Heads was in the group there, and he he contributed one song to this. But uh, Jonathan Richmond, uh, the Modern Lovers broke up, I, and so time this came out, I they they were really, really were no more. Richmond moved on to really, really, really quirky music. This is quirky in itself, uh, but it's really good rock and roll. Uh, he really got, to me, strange. Uh, some people really love his other stuff. It begins and ends here for me, but the modern lovers. And I still love the old world. I said, old world, I said, old world, I said, well, I see the 50s apartment house, bleak in the morning sun, but I still love the Finally, we got uh, Robert Schumann. I want to talk about real quick. Uh, he's one of the first romantics, uh, born in 1810, died in 55. I mean, this this guy, this guy had problems. This guy, uh, his teachers. I mean, he was be the first to tell you he's a complete failure. And sadly, a lot of people would totally agree with him. His teachers even told him he had no talent. He was trying to become a pianist, uh, but he got syphilis. The medicine he took had mercury. And it crippled his hands, so he had to switch over to composing and conducting, and it, he just couldn't get anything. Um, uh, his one of his teachers had a nine-year-old daughter, Claire. He fell in love with. I don't know how you fall in love with a nine-year-old, but somehow he did. Uh, he wouldn't even let her marry him till he's like. Until she was 21, he got a court thing that hey, I need to marry her. But she was a virtuoso pianist, and this guy. Nothing was happening. He was a manic depression, depression. He had manic depression, and um, so he's putting out stuff, but nothing was going. And uh, finally, tried to kill himself by jumping into the Rhine River. Couldn't get that one right, so he got committed to an asylum, and where he died of starvation due to once again syphilis. So there you go. That's Robert Schumann's life. But this is Symphony Number no. Three, the Rhenish, Rhenish. Uh, it deals with the celebration of the Rhine River. It is this. This is actually very beautiful music. Here's what what was different on his classical music. What makes some differences? It was like a conversation, two people talking, short bursts of emotion instead of this kind of a longer. You know, these songs, it's like, duh, 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 boom, duh, duh, boom. Yeah. It, it's like two people talking almost. And that's his love of literature and everything. You get some of that in here. But the Rainish is more, is more happy. And he's not necessarily known for joyful music. And it did become popular. But is it like one of the classics of all time? No, not. But very, very good stuff. I'd heard of him, and so I saw this, I tried it. It's a little snap, crackly, poppy, but I do like classical. So, yeah, a guy that Phil considered himself a failure, you know, his music is now known, but uh, never achieved what he wanted to. So, there we have it. <laughs> That's for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It's also so I hope you did too. And um, yeah, come back. I um, might have a couple more videos this week. I went always for sure at the record store. So thank you, everyone. Have yourself a great one. Bye.